Hello and welcome to a brand new channel. Uh, this channel is going to be about trading. Uh, this channel is going to be about sharing my experiences and my knowledge over the last 15 years. Um, I've been stuck at home, uh, I've been injured, can't work, uh, have to stay home unfortunately. And uh, I decided to maybe use this time to share some of my information with you. Call it a Christmas gift. Um, what you're looking at over here is uh, something I've been working on for about a year now. It's called the Portfolio Manager. What this uh, spreadsheet does is that it summarizes everything I've learned over the last 15 years. Um, this is uh, in regards to stock, forex, and options trading. This um, is full of useful information. Uh, for me to look at on a daily basis. Um, what you're looking at is only a summary of all the trades that I have on. In particular, there are 10 trades here. Uh, you'll see 20 positions, but this represents 10, a portfolio of 10 long and short trades. Uh, why do I do long and short? Uh, simply because I'm always hedging out the risk. Uh, what does that mean? That means taking out any possibility or at least limiting the possibility considerably um, by about 90 to 95 percent that there will be a major loss on any one of my trades how does that happen well you take a long position you take a short position um, they're both doing their own thing in the market but believe me if there's a stock market crash both of these stocks are negatively affected and both of them going down meaning the one that you had gone short on would end up making lots of money while the one up top or going long would end up losing a bunch of money but the two should offset the major loss and the loss should be next to nothing on average when that happens i lose about two maybe three percent while i hear of other people losing in upwards of 40 to 50 percent of their portfolios some get wiped out if they're using too much leverage completely wipe out which is sad and trading like this prevents that from happening so once again what you're looking at is my summary i have a bunch of positions on right here um, these are their tickers um, this is what i'm doing with that stock whether i'm buying it or selling it this is my long entry my short entry on the long side and this is my short entry and current short price on the short side the units that i've um, uh, bought or sold their next earning dates the days until the earnings um, why do you want to keep track of that while well, on earnings the stock moves in big values that's something you should definitely pay attention to and so i do uh, what's my current uh, point loss um, or profit obviously how much am i risking to do that how much return am I getting and pair together is how much is it making okay so I call these pairs because it's a, a single trade is composed of two trades in this scenario and uh, this is the way the big boys do it and this is how I do it and it works well and what I'd like to do right now is share this information with you I've pretty much reset down to zero on my point loss here just to show you that this stuff does work. Um, by showing you the proof, I can hopefully maybe get some more information from people like me out there and make this even better. But um, this is what I do. Uh, this is a cumulative of 15 years of knowledge, um, as much of what to do and not to do. Um, over the years, I've learned essentially a thousand and one ways of how not to trade before i actually learned how to trade the proper way and there isn't that many ways to do that it's just that people don't look in the right places they don't seek the proper education or they just simply are lied to um, which also drives the business but we'll get onto that later on uh this is a new idea for you know i've i have all this extra time i might as well be using it for something and so i decided to share with you guys what i've learned and if you take it somewhere great if this makes you a lot of money awesome i'm not going to be telling you to trade any of these stocks 
go ahead if you feel like doing any of that on your own, but remember, I didn't make you do it. I will prove to you with this YouTube channel that this is profitable. And then we can start a conversation after that. Um, so where are we at? 10 long and short trades, uh, long exposure, nine and a half thousand, short exposure, 97. I want to keep that number relatively close to one another. What you don't want is a portfolio of long stocks and you're exposed 4,000 and then you're exposed on like 9,000 on the long uh, short side. You want these to be nice and even. Um, current gain loss based on risk, my portfolio correlation. Every trade has a correlation and then a portfolio correlation is just the correlation of all the trades that are there, which is 0.15. That's a good correlation. You don't want that too closed. At this point in time, if you look over here, it's 106% uh, exposure. I do use a little bit of leverage, so I've gone over my margin just a little bit. I can do that with my broker. I can do that up to, I believe, 30%, which is not much, but I do use it once in a while. It's This just utilizes my whole portfolio to make money. Um, people would say to you that, oh, that's so scary. You should never do that. You could lose everything. You should have something banked. Just remember, um, that would be their way of... Um, keeping themselves safe, right? But if I'm hedging, I'm keeping that risk out of this portfolio. Effectively, I'm stopping that from ever happening. So why would I not want to invest all my money? Um, this way of trading, it, um, it produces a result of anywhere between 20 to 30% a year if you just go in long and short stocks. If you do options, it's exponential. It could be in the hundreds. But for now, let's just focus on what I do um, to be profitable stock trading. This is the one of the safest and not the simplest. I'd love to say the simplest because it all seems simple once you go through all of this, but it is not simple. It's a lot of information to take in. And my goal on this channel, and who knows where this channel is going to go. Maybe it's going to evolve into something I haven't thought of before, but um, it's just to share and uh hopefully i learned something new out of this as well there's many people out there and there's somebody going to be watching and they'll look at this and say hey you're missing this one vital piece and uh i'd love to find out if what what you guys are looking at other than technical i've i've done technical analysis it, it, it's i've spent years in it i've written robots i've you know copied other people's signals none of that stuff works um what works is price action and fundamentals. And first and foremost, fundamentals. Price action comes like right at the last moment in my selection process. So what are we looking at over here? Um, we're looking at a portfolio, which is not gonna have, I'm not expecting any big crazy jumps. I'm expecting maybe growth, maybe loss in some of these stocks, whatever. Um, the earnings are not coming for somewhere between a month to two months. And so I know there's not going to be that much volatility <clears throat> yet. We're going to be profitable. Now, currently, um, an unrealized profit and loss of 42.58. Um, that's for the last three days. Essentially, our point loss is 240. Why is that different from unrealized point loss? That's because I had a little bit of a drawdown. When I entered all these trades on Friday last week, right, or sorry, just before Christmas, it wasn't Friday, I think it was Wednesday, um, just before Christmas, and, you know, I just wanted to close it all off and get it over with and just get these positions on, I didn't time them properly. So when that happens, you can expect a small drawdown, sometimes a significant drawdown, in this case it was 200 bucks, whatever, it's like, it is what it is, it's, it's hardly anything. So... At this point in time, I've uh, my portfolio right now, um, as of last Friday, now it's a little bit more, but as of last Friday, it's 18,144. And that number I update on a weekly basis on Fridays just to see if I'm up or if I'm down, if it verifies against what I've collected here. And usually my point loss change is within four to five dollars of what the broker does. Why is there the difference? The difference is there simply because uh 
they have commission fees and I'm just not keeping track of commissions. I'm not gonna track of something that's a dollar. I'm interested in the move of the stock. I'm interested in the difference between the prices and that is about it. Um, once it comes to being done and having a, a lookout a predisposition on a stock, you know, whether I'm expecting this thing to go up or if I'm expecting it to go down. I don't look at a chart until I do have that predisposition. Okay, so unless I have that, I'm not even looking at the chart, which is how a lot of people are doing this wrong. And we'll get to that later, but for now, let's focus on what you have in front of you. You have Christmas till now, okay? And currently, point last at $240 since those three. I should almost... Um, We're sitting at $240. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, next to it, VIX. VIX, um, why am I putting VIX in here? VIX, first of all, is a volatility indicator. It shows us where the market's at, where the market is. Um, essentially, this thing spikes whenever the market goes down. So if you have a stock market crash, these things go through the roof. And I've seen it as high as 60-something during uh, uh, the uh, COVID thing. Um, March of last year, 2020, um, S&P 500. And what you're looking at essentially for all of these is the last four months. So just over the last quarter, um, I'm interested in the last three months of data and what does it look like? And essentially this is what it is, right? I'm interested to see where the market's gonna be, how much of a reversal do I need before I start shorting the market and Currently, that's my number right here. This is if the stock market went through this uh, number, which is a equivalent of a retractment of 958 points. That is a bear market at that time, and you shouldn't be going long on anything. Okay, and until that goes through that number again, you shouldn't be um, reversing either. This is my 10-year uh, uh, sorry uh, bond. The 10 year, it's, you see the choppiness of the price. And the, where I'm getting the information is a free source. Uh, this is all free information. You can download it online. Uh, sometimes they have these errors in their pricing and they're reflected by these you know, null numbers here and they show up on the chart and they're not important. What I'm really interested in is the final price and where it's really at. And overall, I see that it's a sideway action and nothing really happening. Uh, the yield, the yield curve over uh, the last, you know, this is the updated over the last month. I can see all the information down here, but the curve over here represents the very last number on the bottom. Um, once again, all of these here, they're all automated automatically. All I do is I go to data, I go to refresh, and everything starts working out beautifully on its own, which is which is great my USD Canadian, and you'll notice that there's a gap again. Sometimes if you just you know, go on to refresh that data, it will actually update and that will disappear. Um, this is not important. What's important is the final price and that overall I'm seeing that there's an uptrend. There was a slowdown and now there's an uptrend and what you're seeing that is the updated actual number that it is right now. And this changes 24 7 from Monday, so from Sunday in the evening until Friday in the evening. This number will keep on changing because it's uh, th that market doesn't stop. That's the Forex market. I mean, just mainly I'm dealing with US and Canadian dollars, so I'm putting that on there just so I understand what's going on with the currency and my exposure. Um, I'm, my portfolio is in US dollars. Here's my gold and what's going on with that since August. Here's my silver. Once again, one of those, you know, if I go to refresh that, it'll either disappear or show up somewhere else. It doesn't matter. It shows me the price, and overall, I can see where the price is going. It's it's sideways action, but it seems to be heading down a little bit, but now it looks like it might have recovered and it's going back up. Whatever. It doesn't matter. That's just copper, oil, uh, there's your commodities. Um, the portfolio itself is... Uh, it's made up of stocks, so I'm sorry, I'm a little awkward on uh, talking to you guys. I, I don't usually do stuff like this. I'm awkward on camera, obviously. 
I don't know if it's camera shyness or if whatever. <laughs> um, it's hard to do this actually, but whatever. Maybe maybe I'll get used to it. Um, here's my first trade. Okay, uh, Morningstar, which is uh, financial data and stock exchange uh, firm. Um, then I have international paper uh, on the bottom, which I'm shorting. I'm going long in the Morningstar, and I'm shorting the IP which is a uh, consumer cyclical packaging and containers. And so uh, what are these companies? Uh, within my sheet, I can click on Morningstar and find out what they are and what are they? This is what they are, okay? Um, they're in for stock information and stuff like that. This is like Bloomberg or something, right? Whatever. This company's numbers looked good. I don't really care um, what business they're in. What I care about is that they are profitable, that their industry is going to outperform the rest of the market, and that they have something coming up that will make their stock move. Those are the three things that I really care about. There's a lot more things at play here, but those are the things that I'm keeping track of because those always produce. All right, And all that is on this sheet right here in front of me. Um, about those two stocks. And then this just summarizes all of the sheets all on one page just so I can keep track of everything. But here it is. Here's uh, Morningstar versus IP company, uh, international paper. Uh, their price action. Uh, the blue line here is represented uh, by Morningstar. And then the orange line is represented by international paper. Essentially, what you want to see is you want to see a crisscross of the two. You don't want them to be too choppy. You want something that's constantly rising against something that's constantly falling, producing this nice increase in spread. Now, what is spread? Spread is simply the difference between the two prices, the long and the short. So if you were to divide the Morningstar uh, average price by the international paper average price, you would get a number, okay? So if you would divide the price, which is uh, 334.55 divided by 49.21, you would get a specific spread and you'd get that spread exactly right here. Ah, uh, sorry, you would get this spread. And with that, we can start making some conclusions like, um, if I lose 10% or more of this, or let's say 30% of this, I close my trade. But if I win 30% or more, then I add to it or I close it as well. At a So let's set some rules here. The, the rules I use is a three to one. Pretty much you wanna win 30% and you only wanna give up 10% every time. So. If the spread change or point loss goes to minus 10, I automatically close it. If it goes to 10 and above, you know, I'm, I'm happy about it. If it goes to 30, I add on to the position, meaning I'll either double up by two more, or sorry, three more shares of Morningstar, or and uh, sell for 23 more of IP because you wanna increase the position in both sides, and I'll get to that later. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're playing the price difference between the two, okay? And I will get into more details on this. I'm just trying to cover in this video everything all at once and just to give you an outlook. But I will be going over these again in more detail. You just got to stick with me. Like I said, I don't do this on a regular. I find it awkward that I'm talking to, a, to my laptop right now. <laughs> But it, whatever, somebody's going to watch this and they're going to appreciate it. I know they're going to appreciate it because this is good stuff. Um, and if you stick around, you will make money with this. I can't make a promise because it's all up to you. And I can't, just cannot make those promises. But you'll see that this works. I'll prove it to you with, uh, with YouTube. And there you go. So average moves. Um, how on average does this stock move? You know, like how much does the spread change on average? And you like, I like this number to be positive, you know, like, so it's going up. If it was a negative, that means this is a losing trade, obviously. So there you have it. Um, max daily volatility in dollar value. 
how much dollars can you expect for the stock to move on daily this is a very volatile stock it goes up by 15 and it goes down by nine that's huge you know like if you're playing options with this which this chart does in this section here but i'll get to that later uh, first of all you need to know how to play options to be able to do that but it's all on this paper right here it's i mean on this spreadsheet and it can be used um the international paper doesn't move as much yet it's an effective hedge because um when it doesn't move you just buy a little bit more of it but you know that's 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 another uh, another thing to look at stock returns uh what were the returns today what were the returns for the whole week for the month and for the quarter so if you look at a uh, horizon of three months uh, Morningside increased by 32 percent and the international paper really uh, lost 11 and a half percent of its value and this is just in-depth uh, stock returns monthly weekly uh, today and quarterly um, what do we have here still uh, this just gives me how much profit there currently is um, what my targets are for trading like where should I double up where should I close the stop is just 10% less of that and then my soft target is you know 30% of the uh, initial so if you look at where you start 612 would be 10% less than 680 and then this would represent 30% okay so and then I can go to second target if I if the price just keeps on going I love this trade I can add more to it and add more to it and add more to it but at this point in time there'd be so much added that it would represent like 60% of my portfolio which I never do so I usually stop at the second I'm fine with that because that gives me like 20% exposure and I really don't want to increase it any more than that it's you never want to put too much into one trade like on TV and all the advertisements you ever see people will tell you oh put all your money into this or they'll hint at that, you know, and then dumb money as they call us, or they used to call me, I, I don't consider myself that anymore, but you know, what they call people that don't know what they're doing, will go out there and they'll invest in one thing and just put all their cash into it and watch it wither away or gain, 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 be all happy about it and then turn bipolar when they lose it all. I, I'll tell you this, this game, if you play it the wrong way, you'll, you'll lose not only your money, you won't lose only your, youth you will lose your life to it okay your family um it's an ugly game if you play it the wrong way and you'll sit in front of the computer and your whole life will fall apart behind your ass and you won't notice it okay um so i'm glad that i can be doing this for somebody they will start in the right place and then it can expand from there because this stuff can be taught to just about anybody all right and uh provided you start in the right place you have unlimited potential with this okay so um let's get to what's next the spread obviously you want it to be increasing you don't want it to be going down right we want to be the spread to, to be bigger and bigger and if you look at this this lines up perfectly because i i screen these i look at them and be, i have this chart set up before i even enter the position and i look at it and say hey how does the price action look are these too choppy uh, if they're too choppy i'll just go and choose a different stock and put it into this data and see what that looks like um what i'm looking for is a nice steady line on the spread and yes there could be some up and down there's all different um you know communications coming out there's a conference or something and it looks like the company is going to be doing bad or they're going to be doing better so the, the price will chop a little bit um why does not that that doesn't worry me is because every one of these trades represents no more than five percent or around five percent of my portfolio i don't have a i don't have a trade that i initially trade where i put on 30 percent of all my money there's that doesn't belo belong in here at all when you trade like that you're doomed from the start and you're not going to last very long and trust me that's i've been there i've tried it and sometimes it does work out in the short ter short, short term but couple of months pass by and you're gonna end up crying because you've lost it all again and I've been there um, you'll relate to this fairly quickly if you're somebody that's done the wrong ways and I understand I've been there so another CRVL MDT Corville Corporation are against Medtronic why am I choosing these um, 
this once again is not a video about fundamentals. We'll get to those and fundamentals are very important. Like I said, I'm showing you this info so I can prove to you that this method works. I'm not going to start a series of videos that everybody's going to find boring and nobody's going to watch. What I want to show you is I want to show you the proof first and then you can decide whether or not you want to learn more. Okay. Um, and so this is what you have on Carvel and Metatronic. What is Metatronic? We click on there, their website pops up. Metronic, uh, healthcare professionals, our company. Let's do an overview. Uh, healthcare technology solutions for the most complex and challenging conditions inspire hope and new possibility in people all over the world. What's most important about this website? There's only one thing, the investor relations. So somewhere on the front page, by law, they're required to have this investor relations um, contact, healthcare professionals, patients, our company. Maybe I'm on the wrong page. Let's go back to the front page. I really do not see anything about investor relations, but that is one of the places you look at. Let's try it. It has to be here. It's by law. They have to actually give this to you. So our company news is something to look at, but I don't see investor stuff. Um, anyway, news. Um, is a company bad or is a company good? If I'm not seeing a lot of news coming out lately, usually that means one thing. Um, they're hiding something. Okay. Uh, there isn't really much coming out. I mean, the last thing came out in October. What else do they have? Media resources, stories, press releases. Let's see that. Surgery system, December 7th. Medtronic Hugo Robotic Assisted Surgery System is Health Canada license for their enabling accessories. Okay, so they received some license. Usually something like this would push the stock up. And it did. Like if you look over here for the price action, it's actually it's going up, right? So these are favorable. Um, cloud select and international collaboration. You have to look at the news, but once again, um, I'm already getting ahead of myself. I'm doing too much here. Uh, let's get off of that for a moment and let's focus on this. Um, what I want to see is I want to see some positive results and I've gone through the process of looking at every company and fundamentally you have to have, you know, you have to look at it you have to be biased towards it in a certain way. You can't just go and trade a stock because you think it's going to go up or you can't just go and trade a stock before because you think it's going to go down based on looking at a chart. Let's say um, I buy stocks or I sell stocks completely irrelevant, uh, whether it's gone up or down before. Although I like to see that nice price action, you know, nice steady price action, which is great. A trending thing is a good thing for you. But that could be the turnaround story and you're going to be getting in at the worst possible time because you're not lined up with the fundamentals. You have to time your entries and this allows you to do that. It really helps you in a big way. Let's go to uh, next Accenture and Zoom video communications. If you look at their price action, they're totally opposite of each other. There's a lot of action here. It's a lot of volatility. Uh, this is going to be my big one of the bigger winners. Currently, I'm not doing anything. I had that drawdown first, um, right before Christmas. And just now it's pretty much, uh, it's gone to zero. Like if you look at this price action, I probably picked it up right about here and then it dropped on me. Why didn't I close it? This one was almost at 9% when it went down and um, I almost closed it. I said, hey, well, these two do move a lot. Like if you look at the price action, ACN on average, okay, this is average, sorry, max volatility. It could go up by $25 and it could go down by 10. Um, Zoom, 
uh, Zoom communications could go up by 17. Or actually, it did over the last four months. It's moved up by 17 and it went down by 58. And this was probably on some big news, missed earnings or something. And getting back to that, you know, when earnings come out, big moves happen. That's probably when that happened, right? So these are very volatile companies and I'm expecting, expecting a lot of volatility and I'm expecting this trade to do relatively well over the next month or so before I close it. Uh, currently the profit is minus 473 and you can come back here. I'll go through these on a daily basis, a series of a shorter videos and we'll go through all of my trades and we'll take a look at those and why I chose train technologies versus Zimmin Biomed Holdings. Like I said, I will be sharing all that info. You just have to click subscribe, click that button, uh, bell button and you'll, you'll be notified every time something new comes out. This trade currently is making $20.72. This trade here is making $29.06. Another trade is losing $2.70. You see this? There's a lot of up and down and this can happen. You know, like unless you expect this to happen, you don't want to know what, what hits you. So you have to visualize it. I like to visualize it to see what's going on. I uh, currently the spread loss is, you know, it's, it's very small. If it does end up getting to minus 10, I will close this trade. I will close the long and I'll close the short or I'll keep the long if it's a good price action and it's profitable and I'll uh, get rid of the short and I'll replace it with something else. I can do that. Um, what are these numbers here? Uh, this is your profit to earnings ratio. Um, obviously you want the ratio for your long to be going up and the ratio for the short to be relatively going down. Let's see if these change today by refreshing those. So if you'll, you'll notice this number here, 5911 changed to something else. That's because I haven't updated that data yet. I'll see what the update is. So today it's gone back down a little bit. And now currently when I started this trade, uh, the first PE was 57.42. Currently, updated PE is 58.62. So the PE for the long is growing, which is a very good sign. I want the PE to be expanding. And then let's update Verizon. And ideally, what I want is I want Verizon to be decreasing. So original PE was 9.9. .9. I would like this number to be lower than 9.9. .9. Um, 9.91, it hasn't changed at all. Sometimes it doesn't change. But, you know, if I uh, let's go back to Morningstar 7061, let's refresh that. I just know where these data is coming from. I have, uh, yeah, so that's going up actually from 69.3, I have essentially three trade trading days ago to 70.4, which is nice. This one here was at 10.09. And here we have an example of one which is going up ideally that's not an ideal situation sorry that's not an ideal situation ideal situation like when everything works out perfectly you want this to be lower than your initial okay that's one of my filters but if the price action has been so steady and it's showing that it's just does nothing but going back down and we're still lower than the industry so what this is, this is a represent, represent, that representative of the PE for the industry of choice. So the PE for financial sector right now is 1296. And I chose a stock that PE is actually higher. It's like close to 70 or now it's at 70, meaning that that stock is going to outperform the rest of the industry, which is forecasted to do only 1296 times their earnings. If you look at the international paper, it's underperforming the industry, which is the consumer cyclical packaging and containers. And uh, that industry is doing, consumer cyclical is doing 31.64 and they're doing 10. So that's most likely to go down. That's one thing that I know for sure. Um, their market caps, I want these to be big companies. I don't want them to be small. So anything over one to two billion is something I'm interested for shorts. I'm actually interested in something that could be like a hundred billion. The bigger, the better. The bigger they are, the more stable they are. Um, their earnings, when to expect those once again for volatile times and then dividends. Why are dividends important? 
Well, because when the dividend comes out on January 6th, I can expect the Morningstar price to adjust by $1.44 down just because of that, right? So I'll know that on that day, the stock is definitely going to lose that much of its value. Why? Well, because this is how much they're paying out to their investors, and that's why they're going to be losing that much. And then uh, the dividend for IP just came out. They haven't announced the new date, so there's no update on that just yet. All right. Um, this video is probably long enough by now. Um, what I want you to focus on is my numbers here. 42.58 um, is the floating point loss. Currently, the point loss is 240. Like I said, we started off with a drawdown of minus 200. Anywho, that... Uh, this is where we're at. The floating is at 42.58, and the point loss is currently at 240.03. And I also have a little graph here on the right side to represent where we're standing at. We started here. Uh, should I put a zero to that? I think I should put a zero there. Oh, what's going on? See, I'm doing this for the first time. I need to figure out what I'm doing still. <laughs> Bear with me. What's going on really is that my little picture here is taking up most of the screen here and I essentially can't go back left. Here we go. <laughs> um, okay. I'll move this guy in the next, uh, next video. Uh, what else is there to say? I mean, that's it, right? Uh, Enjoy the video and uh, hopefully you subscri subscribe. And there will be videos coming out. I'm going to try to keep this relatively frequent, maybe two a week, maybe three. I don't know. It's short and simple. All I have to do is in front of my computer. Like I said, I'm injured, can't go to work. I do work outside and uh, I'm just not going to be getting around for much for the next little while. So use this to teach somebody something and make some friends. Ciao.